Welcome to our deep dive today. We're going to be exploring something uh, yeah. something super intriguing. It's all about how autistic adults experience emotional contagion. Oh, yeah. You know, emotional contagion, right? It's like that subtle way we unconsciously absorb and mirror like yeah. the emotions of people around us. Right. But for this deep dive, we're really going like beyond the basics. And we're going to be focusing in on how this experience can be different for autistic adults. Exactly. We're going to be unpacking a recent blog post from Cheap ABA. It's called Adult Autism and Emotional Contagion, Unpacking the Research. I think what's so fascinating about this research mm -hmm. is it suggests that autistic adults mm -hmm. might not always like catch the same emotional vibes as, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Neurotypical people. Right. Like, those without autism. So are you saying that they're kind of like immune to uh, the emotional atmosphere? Not exactly immune, but research indicates mm -hmm. that they often experience like a lower level of emotional contagion. Oh, okay. But here's the crucial part. It's not about a lack of empathy. Right. It's more nuanced than that. Okay, so then what are we talking about here? What might this look like in real world situations? Right. Think about like a team meeting hmm. where... Some like tense news gets dropped. Yeah. You might see people visibly reacting like, yeah. you know, furrowed brows, nervous fidgeting. But an autistic colleague mm -hmm. might remain calm mm. and just focused on the task at hand. Mm. They're processing the information. Yeah. But their outward response might not mirror the general emotional tone. That's a really interesting point. It seems like familiarity also plays a role here, right? Absolutely. Like, I mean, aren't we all a bit more emotionally in sync with people we're close to. You're absolutely right. Research suggests uh. that autistic adults are actually more susceptible mm. to emotional contagion uh. when they're with people they know well uh. or in comfortable environments. Yeah. Like familiarity reduces social anxiety mm. and it strengthens those bonds, yeah. which seems to allow for greater flow of like oh, shared know. emotions. <laughs> so it's not a simple on off switch. It's almost like the volume knob mm. for emotional contagion gets adjusted. Yep. Depending on the social context. And a great way to put it. But let's not forget Autism is a spectrum. Mm. Does that mean there are variations mm. in how much emotional contagion each person experiences? Absolutely. It's so crucial to avoid making sweeping generalizations. Right. The level of emotional contagion can vary greatly from person to person. It's influenced by factors like the severity of their autistic traits oh. and their cognitive abilities. So we need to approach this with a sense of individuality. But mm -hmm. I'm curious. What exactly causes this reduced emotional contagion in the first place? The blog post pointed to a few key factors. Right? Exactly. One major factor is the difficulty many autistic individuals have in reading facial expressions. Okay. You know, those subtle cues that neurotypical people often pick up on might not register in the same way. That makes sense. If you're not picking up on the visual cues, you're missing a whole layer of mm. emotional communication. What but about the other factor? Well, there's also the aspect of reduced social attention. Some research suggests that. Mm. Autistic individuals might not automatically zoom in on the social nuances of an interaction. Yeah. The same way neurotypical people do. Oh, interesting. So their attention might be drawn elsewhere, leading to a different experience of emotional contagion. Fascinating. And the final factor mentioned yeah. in the blog post. Well, we know there are neurological differences mm -hmm. in autistic individuals, mm -hmm. particularly in brain circuitry. Mm-hmm relating to social processing. Right. So if the brain is wired differently, it stands to reason that mm -hmm. emotional processing and sharing might also function differently. This is all incredibly insightful. But before we move on, I think it's super important to address a potential misconception. We've been talking about reduced emotional contagion. Mm. But that doesn't mean autistic people lack empathy, right? Absolutely not. Mm. Autistic people can and do understand. Yes. And respond to emotions. Okay. But they might need clearer cues. Yeah. Or different communication strategies. It's about meeting people where they are, mm. not expecting them to conform to like neurotypical norms. Right. For sure. Welcome back to our deep dive into emotional contagion and autism. It's really mind blowing to think about how something so subtle can have such a big impact on how we connect with each other. I know, right? Yeah. We've been talking about how autistic adults often experience emotional contagion differently. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to really like dig into what this research really means for our interactions. Okay, let's unpack those implications. What stands out to you as particularly significant? Well, one of the biggest takeaways mm -hmm. is the potential for misunderstandings mm -hmm. in social situations. Mm -hmm. Think about it. If someone isn't picking up 
on those unspoken emotional cues, mm -hmm. it's easy for their actions to be misinterpreted. Oh, totally. Can you give us a concrete example of how this might play out? Sure. Imagine like a workplace scenario mm -hmm. where a project is facing some serious challenges. Okay. Non-autistic colleagues might be showing their stress mm -hmm. through body language and subtle mm -hmm. changes in tone. Right. But an autistic colleague might not pick up on those cues mm -hmm. and continue to approach the situation right. in a calm, mm -hmm. factual way. I can see how that could lead to friction. Their colleagues might see them as detached or uncaring when, in reality, right. they're just processing the situation differently. Exactly. It's a classic example of how neurodiversity can lead to communication breakdowns Yeah. if we're not aware of these differences. For sure. And that's where clear, direct communication becomes so crucial. So instead of expecting someone to just read the room, we should encourage everyone to be upfront about their feelings. Precisely. Instead of relying on those subtle cues, yeah. it's helpful to explicitly state your emotions and intentions. Yeah. This creates a more inclusive environment where everyone feels comfortable expressing themselves, Yeah. regardless of their neurotype. That makes a lot of sense. It's about recognizing that what's clear to one person yeah. might not be clear to another. But you've mentioned several times that autism is a spectrum. How does that play into how we support autistic individuals. That's a key point. Just as autistic traits vary widely, mm. so does the level of emotional contagion. Someone might experience Ugh. what works for one person, yeah. might not work for another. We need to move away from one-size-fits-all solutions and really focus on understanding individual needs and strengths. So we're talking about personalized support, tailored to a person's specific challenges and abilities. Exactly. It might involve things like providing explicit instruction on social cues, offering alternative ways to communicate, mm -hmm. or creating environments that minimize sensory overload. Right. It's about building a framework mm -hmm. that allows individuals to thrive in their own unique way. I love that approach. It's about empowering people mm. and recognizing that everyone has different needs and different ways of navigating the world. This research really challenges us to rethink our assumptions huh. about what it means to be socially skilled. It really does. We often equate social skills with being able to pick up on subtle cues yeah. and mirror emotions. Right. But true social intelligence yeah. might actually lie in recognizing and respecting the diverse ways in which humans interact and connect. That's a profound way to look at it. It challenges us to embrace neurodiversity and see these differences not as deficits, but as valuable variations in the human experience. And, you know, while we've focused a lot on the challenges, it's important to acknowledge that reduced emotional contagion can also have its advantages. Oh, that's interesting. I'd love to hear more about the potential benefits. Well, think about high-stress professions mm -hmm. like emergency medicine or crisis intervention okay. in those situations. Yeah. Being less swayed by the strong emotions of others can be a real asset. Yeah, I see what you mean. It allows for clear thinking and decisive action. That's a great point. In those contexts, a degree of emotional detachment mm -hmm can be crucial for making rational decisions and providing effective support. Exactly. It highlights the importance of recognizing the strengths and talents mm. that often accompany neurodiversity. Quite sure. Autistic individuals often possess unique abilities in areas like pattern recognition, attention to detail, and logical thinking. It's like we're expanding the definition of what it means to be socially intelligent. It's a paradigm shift for sure. Total and I think this leads perfectly into the final part of our deep dive where we'll explore some practical tips for building more inclusive relationships mm -hmm. and communication strategies. Sounds good to me. Let's take a quick pause, and we'll be back soon to wrap things up. And we're back for the final part of our deep dive into emotional contagion and autism. We've uncovered some fascinating research and explored the implications, both the challenges and the unexpected advantages. Yeah, it's been a real eye-opener. It has. So let's shift gears and talk practical strategies. Knowing that emotional contagion works differently for autistic adults, how can we use this knowledge to create more inclusive and understanding interactions? Well, I think it all begins with awareness. Simply recognizing that these differences exist is a huge step forward. So educating ourselves and others about neurodiversity and its impact on how people experience emotions. Exactly. Knowledge is power. And once we have that awareness, we can start to adapt our communication styles to be more inclusive. Okay. I'm all about concrete examples. What are some specific communication strategies that can help bridge the gap? One of the simplest yet most effective strategies is to be more upfront about your own emotions. 
instead of relying on subtle cues, clearly state how you're feeling. So instead of hinting at your stress about a project deadline, you might say, I'm feeling anxious about this deadline. Exactly. That directness can be incredibly helpful for autistic individuals who might not pick up on the underlying emotional tone. It takes the guesswork out of communication. What other tips do you have? Active listening is crucial. Pay attention to both what someone is saying and their body language, and don't hesitate to ask clarifying questions. So if someone seems confused or unresponsive, it's okay to gently check in and say something like, I'm not sure if I'm explaining this clearly. Is there anything I can clarify? Precisely. Mm. It shows that you're genuinely trying to understand their perspective and creates an open space for communication. This all comes back to patience and empathy, wouldn't you say? Absolutely. Recognizing that we all experience and express emotions in different ways is fundamental to building genuine connections. And that might mean adjusting our expectations in social situations, especially when we're interacting with autistic individuals. Right. For example, if you're inviting someone to a social gathering, it can be really helpful to give them details about the event in advance. Things like where it's being held, how many uh -huh. people will be there, what the noise level might be. like Those kinds of details can make a big difference in reducing anxiety and making the experience more enjoyable. Exactly. It's about anticipating potential challenges and finding ways to create a more comfortable and inclusive environment for everyone. I think one of the most important takeaways from this entire deep dive is that we need to broaden our understanding of empathy. I completely agree. Yeah. We need to recognize the diverse ways in which people experience and express empathy. And that includes understanding how autistic individuals might show empathy differently. It's about looking beyond surface level behaviors and seeking to understand the person underneath. This has been such an insightful conversation. I feel like I've gained a whole new perspective on emotional contagion, autism, and the power of inclusive communication. Me too. And I hope our listeners feel the same way. So as we wrap up this deep dive, I want to leave our listeners with a final thought. How can each of us, in our own unique ways, contribute to creating a more inclusive and understanding world for autistic individuals? That's a wonderful question to reflect on. It could be something as simple as educating yourself about autism challenging stereotypes or advocating for more accessible and inclusive spaces. Or it could be something more personal, like reaching out to an autistic friend or family member and asking, how can I better support you? Exactly. Every small step we take can make a difference. Let's keep the conversation going and continue to learn from each other. Thank you for joining us on this deep dive. Until next time, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep those minds open.